Good morning, everyone. We're continuing here in the laws of Kashrus, and we began yesterday the chapter of Hilchais Bishal Akum, the laws of food that is cooked by a non Jew. Today he writes, Tanoi Issa Bishal Akum. There are conditions that must be met in order for a person to have violated the prohibition of Bishal Akum, of the food cooked by a non Jew. Shnei Tanoim Hisnu Chazal Be Issa Bishal Akum. There are two Tanoim, there are two stipulations. That Chazal, our sages, have enacted, or they made necessary in order for there to be a prohibition of Bishal Akum. Ha'echa, number one. She'emaychol davar hatzarech Bishal. Number one, the food has to be something that needs to be cooked. Ve'ena roi le'echal chai, not something that is fitting to eat raw. Why? She'im roi hu liyois necha ba'idachai, because if you could eat this food while it's raw, for example, you take a carrot, you don't have to cook carrots, it's very easy to eat a carrot raw, many people do. So, The fact that the goy then takes the carrot and he goes and he makes steamed carrots with it, it doesn't really have any chashivas, it's not really important that he's done it, because you could have eaten it the way that it was already. So you're not really gaining, it's considered as if the non-Jew has done absolutely nothing, to this carrot. Meaning part of the prohibition of eating the food that is cooked by the Akum, by the non-Jews, is that they are improving the food, they're making it edible, and therefore you are you have a gratitude in you towards them for that which they are doing, and it makes a connection. But if the food itself could be eaten the way that it is, so the, what did he do? He added some spices, he put it into the pot, he put it in the microwave, and therefore says the says the halacha, that that's not, that's not considered bishul akum. Hatanaya sheni, who the second condition that must be met, it has to be a food item that is oil that is normally found on the tables of kings. What does that mean? Prominent people are the type that would eat this particular kind of food. Because something that is not so chashiv, something that is not such a, a prominent kind of a food, you don't invite people over to eat that kind of stuff. Something that's not, it's not really such an important meal, such, an, a, such a big deal. We're going to have to see how we're going to deal with that. But the end of the day, he says, the, says we're going, quoting over here in the Shulchan Aruch, that something that is not chashev, doesn't have prominence, people normally wouldn't invite you over for such a meal like that. And therefore you won't come to marry into the non-Jewish world, because anyway, they're not inviting you over for such meals. So if somebody cooks something, let's just say, for example, popcorn. Popcorn is such a chashev thing? Not a chashev thing. It's not a, value, not a very major thing. And therefore, even though that you can't eat it unless it's going to be cooked, but it doesn't have chashivas, it doesn't have importance to it, and therefore perhaps then we would say that there's no prohibition of bishul akum in that particular case. And furthermore, like we mentioned yesterday, one of the reasons that we don't eat the food that's cooked by non-Jews, not only because they cooked it and were afraid of the marriage, but perhaps also they put food in there that's not kosher. So if it's something over here that you're not going to get invited to the house anyway, so then we're not really worried that there's going to be any dover, also there's any prohibited food that's in there. Nimsa shalai So it comes out, he says, that there are the only foods that are going to be also for a person to eat if they are cooked by a non-Jew is number one, they have to be she'eno nechal chai, you cannot eat them raw. The gam and also oil al shulcha malachim, they have to be something that is considered chashiv, prominent enough, uh, like a, a, a good enough food that it would be on the table of prominent people and therefore, therefore they, would, they, they, they would invite you for such a meal and that's what would make it that you're not allowed to eat it. So we'll have to see how we're going to deal with this because times have changed, times do change, and therefore we would have to say that perhaps things that used to be prominent maybe are not prominent, things that were once upon a time eaten raw, not eaten raw, are now eaten raw. We'll have to see how it goes as we go along in the halachas over here to try to make things very practical to understand which foods do we really have to be concerned about are going to be an iser of bishul akum.
Have a wonderful day.